fullbacks aren't people, bro, because he's not on this site, bro. It's Crosby, that's it. <laughs> they, they hate it. <laughs> they don't, they don't, they don't have the access question with sites, bro. Okay, what sites? There's not sites that you be on that they don't make no sense. <laughs> CouchPotatoGM.com is the website. Couch Potato General Manager is the YouTube channel. You know it because you're on it. Go ahead, stop what you're doing, hit that subscribe button. I'm not going to tell you to like it because you haven't heard anything yet, man, but you, I think you will, so just be ready to like it. And comment. We're looking for discussion, debate, conversation, conversing, conversate. We're looking to talk to you, interact with you. Hablamos, hablamos. All that. Look, all listen, that. matter of fact, go to other videos and check out the comment section, man. We hit you back. That's what we do here, man. Um, whether we agree or disagree, it doesn't matter, man. But we're doing the Detroit Lions um, draft breakdown recap, man. And with their very, very first pick, they went offensive line center guard from Arkansas, Frank Ragno. Is that right? Yes, yeah, sir. Have at it. <laughs> <laughs> Frank Ragnow, you know, at the beginning of the draft process, many didn't have him as a, a first round talent, but you know, leading up to the draft, we just kept on hearing his name rise and rise up boards. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. It was reports out there that the Bengals was targeting Ragnow with the 21st overall pick. Uh, Detroit had the 20th pick and they selected Ragnow, interior offensive lineman. Detroit has had injuries on their offensive line. They've they built a pretty good offensive line because the number one thing is protect Matthew Stafford. Absolutely. You know, he's been, yeah, he's been banged around the last couple seasons, but now, you know, they get some fresh, healthy bodies with Glasgow, TJ Lang out there. Mm -hmm. uh, Decker should be coming back from Wagner. Messenger. Mm -hmm. uh, Wagner that they got last year. Mm -hmm. So, at a right now in the interior, he's, I think he's going to play left guard. I think they keep Glasgow at center. Yeah. Us here at CPGM, Offensive line is the most important position group, so Absolutely. we can't get mad at the pick, but what do you think of Ragnar as a player, as a prospect? Like, when, when I think about Ragnar, I know that the, the positives that come out right away when you see my film is, is he's athletic, he can get out in space, he, he's um, super aggressive. For me, though, when I look at him, he wasn't consistent enough for me, and, and you know, his technique wasn't all that great. But, I, I, like, when I, when I saw it on Twitter, I was like, who the hell is this Frank Ragnar? Let me just go look him up. And then I saw what people like about him. But it, it, it just wasn't enough for me. But, you know, I, I guess people just, they love his nasty because he, he is super nasty, yeah, too. he is nasty. He is super nasty, too. That might be his number one quality, actually, is that he's super nasty. And then you talk about, you know, you guys talked about the offensive line, and, and this kind of rounds that out in terms of what you need in the offensive line, you know, protecting um, Stafford, Stafford right. and, 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 you know, getting that run game going because that's the missing piece yep. that this team has missed for I don't know how many years, and I know we killed the Giants for it, but mm -hmm. we, we really, I ain't gonna say we haven't killed the Lions for it, but we probably should have killed the Lions for it sure. because they have a, a superior quarterback in, in Stafford who carries that offense along with the receivers that he has, um, and now you round that out with, with Ragno, and they solidify the offensive line now, and now, you know, now the concern is the run game. And we'll, we'll get to that next. The, 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 the Lions have made a concerted effort to, to improve the offensive line over the last couple of off seasons. Um, to, 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 speaking on Ragnar specifically, I think, I think he never gave up a sack during his yeah, collegiate career. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, so he's accomplished, although he might have some warts, he, he's an accomplished player. I think he had a lot of starts under his belt. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I think the Lions needed that nastiness. I think... As, as far as all the things that happened for him to kind of rise his combine performance and so on and so forth, um, more importantly is the mentality that, that he's going to bring to the table. They, they need, that, that's what running the football is about. That's what stopping the run is about. That's what running the football is about. It, it's really, generally speaking, do your job and can you, can you move the guy across from you? Can you get lower? Can you, can you, can you physically punch the opposition in the mouth over and over again, and Ragnall enjoys it. He enjoys that, and he's going to bring that to the table, and the Lions desperately need some of that. They need to get more nasty yeah. in the trenches. Yeah. It's one thing to be on your, on, your, on your heels in pass protection. You need guys who are going to fire out and create lanes. Yeah. yeah. No, I totally agree with you, man. Um, the acquisition of uh, LeGarrette Blunt in the offseason mm -hmm. speaks to that nastiness. Mm -hmm. uh, also... The second round pick, we're gonna to get to uh, yeah. running back Carryon Johnson yeah. out of Auburn. He's a physical runner. He's a power back 
wit wiggle, uh, has patience. So, you know, this whole mantra of being physical, running the football, because you got to think about the Lions. They had Amir Abdullah out there, mm -hmm. Theo Riddick out there, mm -hmm. these scat the backs, these yep. smaller backs out there, and they're trying to change the, their focus. They want to get physical. They got to go against the Vikings. They got to go against the Bears. So, you know, we know the Packers. Mm -hmm. They're not as physical, but these teams are physical out here, and that's who they're going to have to play for that division. Yeah, I mean, you just said I was, I was going to go there, man. You, you Sometimes, you know, sometimes. Most of the time when teams are drafting, you got to draft based off of what's going on in your division. And it looks like they may have matched that in terms of the office line and going out and getting a carry on Johnson. And, and it, you can say him and, him and LeBlanc Blunt are kind of similar in terms of the way they run the football. Carry on Johnson is a grinder, man. When I watch him, it looks like he's wading through water. There's nothing that's going to stop him, man. He, he's just, he just he's a grinder, man. And and I love the pick, man. I mean, Matt right. Patricia came in here and said, listen, man, we th these are the things we need Matt to take Patricia. care of. I mean, he came in there and, and identified... Okay, listen, we're going to stop this cute football, you know what I'm saying, and, and we're going to protect our quarterback, and we're going to run the ball, and we, we're going to punch people in the mouth. They, they they've just haven't had any balance. I think, what was it, 2013, 2012, the last time they had a, 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 a guy that ran for 100 yards in a game? Like, it, it's, just, it's, crazy. it's just they, they, they have it. They've been one-dimensional offensively, and, and certainly I, I certainly give – uh, Matthew Stafford a lot of credit, particularly post Calvin Johnson, mm -hmm. his ability to kind of raise the level of the guys around him and carry the football team with his right arm. But they need balance. If, if the Lions want to take the step, and they've they've made some 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 trips to the playoffs over the last few years and got bounced in the wild card. You know, when, when it comes to that December football, you got to be able to to shorten games. You got to be able to win late. You got to be able to 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 wear down the opposition. And when you're dropping back 40 and 50 times a game, you're allowing the, the, the defense to just pin their ears back. They, they, they don't have to be concerned. They don't, they, you know what I mean? They, they can just rotate bodies in and get after, get after Stafford. So really, you know, I, again, Stafford has demonstrated that, that he, he's talented enough to carry the team with his right arm, with, with, with his ability to throw the football. The problem is, is that this team can't take the next step until they get more physical up front and, and, and get some more balance. And, and that, to your point, is what they've done early in the draft. Yeah, I think you hit it on the, on the head, Drew, when you said uh, Matt Patricia. You know, he's definitely came in there and, and he's changing the identity of this football team. And I've seen him out there in training camp and he's working these boys hard. You know what I'm saying? And, and mini camp. Mini camp. In, in mini camp. Is it mini camp? Yeah. My training camp. No, yeah. camp. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mini camp. Yeah. Mini camp. I've seen them out there, man. These guys are working hard, and he's changing the culture in Detroit. All right, round number three, man. They went Tracy Walker, man, and this looks to be another safety from Louisiana Lafayette. Not that y'all don't know that, but um, this looks to be a, 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 a more of a Matt Patricia New England. Versatile, I call it versatile as a new safety is what mm -hmm. I call it, mm -hmm. um, where a guy who can play in the nickel, who can play outside, play some outside corner, can kind of do a little, uh, do a couple of different things. And, you know, in New England, they, they, they got a couple of, well, Eric Rowe, yeah. um, you know, can, can do a different, can do a couple of different things. And, and I think every team needs that kind of player where they can play the nickel, they can play outside, they can play inside. Um, and, and, and this guy, he can play safety. So he can do a little of everything. Um, and, and ain't nothing wrong with pick, man. Fourth round pick, the Lions selected Deshaun Hand, defensive end, Alabama. Hand, uh, I think this was one of the Lions' uh, bigger needs. Uh, Ziggy is on the last year of his contract, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I thought they was probably targeting Harold Landry in the first round. Uh, they went offensive line, not mad at it. But to, to wait this long to get a defensive end is a little puzzling, especially Deshaun Hand, which... You know, I'm, I'm not a big fan. He left a lot of meat on the bone in Alabama. Um, yeah, he left a lot of meat on the bone. You know what I think, though? This may work out to be um, better than better than than him playing at Alabama in that there's so much talent on that defense. You know, it's like he could kind of just chill. You know, when you're watching him on film, he's he's one play, he's, he's the most dominant player on the D-line. Next play... He's washed out of the play, and it's it's simple stuff. But you know, you just beat this guy four plays in a row, and now this guy's washing you out. What just happened? Sure. You know what I mean. Sure. And, and so I don't know if he was taking plays off or or what the deal was. Mentality, his, his mind wasn't there or whatever. But I think here in Detroit with a Matt Patricia, you know, on him, and and you not being, you know, you not being surrounded by the best talent in mm -hmm. the country may, you know, you know, hit that hit that switch and, and keep the switch on. Yeah. You know, um, so I, I like to pick, like you said, there's no Harold. They, they could have went and got Harold Landry. Harold Landry a couple of different times. But, you know, 
Um, I, I think this is a good pick, man. He can play defensive end, you know, defensive tackle. He kind of do a little of everything. So we'll, we'll see what happens. You know, you, you bring up an interesting point, Drew. The, the, the fact that he, he was surrounded by so much talent that, that, that there, there's a potential of him taking plays off. You know what I mean? Not being engaged, fully engaged, snap after snap. Particularly if you, you, you're clearly outmatching the guy across from you and then all of a sudden the here's a play you. where, where you know, you know he, he, he blows you out of the, out of the A gap or the B gap. You know what I mean? So that, that's a very interesting point. I think, I think Patricia, um, Bob Quinn, g- the general manager, they covet that versatility. That, that, that's that's a, a hallmark from the Patriots, obviously, guys being able to play multiple roles, help out in different um, scenarios, being um, flexible in terms of the scheme that you put them in, whether it be a three-man front or four-man front. So I think he kind of falls into that line. Obviously, was coached well at Alabama. Um, we'll see. We'll see if Patricia is able to kind of push the right buttons to get more out of him. All right, next pick, the fifth-round pick. Uh, the Detroit Lions selected Tyrell Crosby. Oregon, he played tackle at Oregon, might be transitioning to guard uh, in the NFL. I know this is one of Drew's favorite guys here. Um, but, you know, the issue I had with Crosby, uh, I thought he was a day two pick. I think he went later because of concussion issues. They had reported some medical issues. But the thing about him is he played at Oregon. You know, their offense doesn't, you know, you're not protected for that long. You know, there's a lot of quick throws, spread type offense. And Crosby is be- at best going forward. I'm not sure how he's going to hold up in pass protection. Um, so I think a move to guard might be the best case scenario for him. And going to this team, he's not going to have to play right away, it looks like, um, you know, with the line they've assembled. And, yeah, this was one of my top offensive tackles, top, top offensive linemen. I just liked his game, man. He was nasty. Uh, like you said, he was always on the move, get out in space. Um, he'd probably be a perfect match for what they was doing before, you know, beforehand with the, with the old offense. But I, I like the pick, man. The fact that he's, he's he slid to them. Yeah, he slid to them, and why not, man? I didn't realize he, he had concussion issues, so that, I was wondering, like, well, how did he fall to the fifth round? And there you have it, man. So y'all might have stole the, you know, got you a steal, man. So, so once again, you, you guys use the term nasty. Mm-hmm. Use the term nasty. I tend to agree with Headley in terms of a move inside, or maybe best mm-hmm. for him. Again, bolstering that that rushing attack. I think that's what it comes down to. And then on top of it, he offers position flexibility. Yep. You know what I mean? Because because you know again. We, we think he has the requisite athleticism, particularly when moving forward, mm-hmm. to play either position, guard or tackle. But but the question mark is the pass protection. He's, he's probably going to play guard. He's probably going to end up playing guard and be your swing tackle. Wouldn't surprise me. And their last pick, the Detroit Lions selected Nick Baldwin, a fullback from San Diego State. Fullback. If, if there was any <laughs> question mark in terms of what the Lions are trying to do, <laughs> that should answer it. The Ragnar pick. Kerry and Johnson, Crosby. Crosby, and then a fullback. That should tell you exactly what they're trying to do. Bro. Fullback are people too, right? Yeah, absolutely. Listen, I guess fullback. I love it, bro. I love it. <laughs> this might be my favorite thing for the Lions right here. Listen, yeah, man. Uh, so it, it, it stated, man. They've stated they, the identity of this team is, is to punch somebody in the mouth, man. This is what the Lions have needed for a long time, man. You're in a division. This might be the new black and blue division um, with the teams that are in there. A, a, number twelve is back. Um, the Vikings missed it by that much. Uh, well, no, they got blown out, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. The Saints missed it by that much. Yes. Um, and you know, the Bears down the rise, man. This probably this this is one of the divisions that I think as a whole drafted very well. Um, and you know, the Lions. I, I like this team, yeah. man. I like yeah. what's going on, man. I like Matthew Stafford. He, he's you can see that he's carried an entire offense by himself. But now he's got a run game. Mm-hmm. And, then, and then you got to look at the, the bigger picture. You know, sometimes you get bogged down into individual players, yeah. which is important, man. You want talented players. But then you have to look at the whole landscape of what they were trying to accomplish with the draft. Mm-hmm. And, and it's physical football. And, yeah. and we love it. And, 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 and you know, again, we, we've intimated that, you know, Patricia's coming from that New England tree, that Belichick tree. And it's about, it's about roles. It's about, it's about doing your job. May not necessarily be the the best athlete on the board, but because he's so proficient at doing X, that's why, we, and that's what we're going to ask him to do. That's why we're going with that guy. And like I said, you draft the fullback, bro. I'm, I'm all in. <laughs> you draft the fullback because we're talking two backs, and, and, and you know, get in that eye. Let's do it. Let's do it. 
And there you have it, man. That's the breakdown. Uh, hashtag Lions Den. Uh, CosmoPotatoGM.com is a website. Like, comment, subscribe. And CPG and Drew. We want to debate. We want to discuss. We want to talk to you guys. We want to interact. My little boy is laughing. I think it's funny because I do it every time. Fast, but listen, man. <laughs> we want to talk to you guys, man. Listen, there's guys out there. You hit up on Twitter. You're hitting up on Facebook. Nobody's talking back to you, man. We're going to talk back. We're going to talk back to you. We're going to talk to you, man. Whether we agree or disagree, man. Listen, I, I, listen, <laughs> listen. We're going to talk to you. This guy's like, I, I debate on Twitter, man. And at the end of the conversation, man. Let me hit that follow. I'm gonna follow this guy, man. Because later in the season, I might have a conversation whether I was wrong or he was wrong, man, or she was wrong. Right. Uh, but that, we're, we're about the interaction, man. So check the comments in other videos, and, and you'll see that it's real, man. Yep.